And I know with the couples that we work with, many times, that's the hang-up. That's the thing that needs to get worked out during the Reignite program. Is that we're praying and we have an expectation of what's going to happen or how it's going to go down or even when it's going to go down. But I can tell you from experience, at the end of my junior year, I was, look, I get it sounds a little bit petty. All right, like I'm, I'm stressed out to the max because I'm not dating and I'm discouraged because I'm not probably going to get married when I wanted to get married. But that was a big deal in my life. A big deal. Scale from 1 to 10, it was a 10. And I finally broke down and started praying about it. And I started praying eight, nine, ten times a day this exact prayer. Lord, you know who I'm in love with. It's Amy. God, that's not working out real well. <laughs> so, so I can't wait to meet the girl that will replace her. She's got to be out there. This is miserable. But, but Lord, honestly, I want your will done and not mine. And I would say things like, Lord, if, if marriage isn't in my future, then change my heart. At this point, I don't care. I want to do what you want me to do. And I'm praying this over and over and over again for several weeks. And I'm driving in my car, getting ready to leave for summer vacation. Actually, I was leaving for Mexico for a study abroad program. So I'm running some errands. And then the Lord, as if he was sitting next to me, spoke out and said, I want you, Michael. Go say goodbye to Amy. And I was like, oh, all right, yeah. Because so I was praying. You know you can pray when you're driving because you don't have to have your eyes closed when you're praying. <laughs> like, can we get past that? All right. And so the Lord did. I'm telling you, like he was sitting in my car. Michael, say goodbye to Amy. I was like, wow, okay. And so I'm thinking in my heart, finally he's going to flush her out of my system. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get to that. Michael, now. Like, I'm doing some stuff. If you haven't noticed, I'll get there. Michael, go immediately. Lord, if you don't go now, I will punish your children's children up to 4,000 generations. <laughs> okay. So I pull off the highway. I go to her apartment. Literally, I'm like, fine, I'm here. Knock, knock, knock. <sighs> knock, knock, knock. I think she was in the bathroom. Uh, and finally she comes to the door. I'm like, hey, I just want to say goodbye. And at this point, we, we have a very close relationship. And the, the guys and gals on that squad, you get very close, like family. And so I, hey, Amy, I know you're graduating leave. I just wanted to say goodbye. And I'm thinking in my head, the Lord told me to be here, so I'm here. <laughs> so I give her a big hug. She hugs me back. I let go. She holds on. And we're like, the fiance? Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right. And so, and so I hugged her again, and then I let go, and then she starts sobbing. And I go, whoa, what, what's happening? And she proceeds to share with me that she was on the phone with her fiancé's father talking about ending the engagement when I came. Now, can you imagine my excitement? The only reason I'm there is because the Lord called me to your doorstep. And so I know this is a sign. This is it. This is my opportunity. I got to tell her my undying love for her, that the whole reason I became a military leader was because of you, because I want to get married and have babies, all that kind of stuff. I'm ready to go. And the Lord was like, hey, wait, no, no, Michael, that is not the plan. Do not tell her your feelings. I'm like, what? I mean, I, was it unnatural for me to think that he brought me there to tell her? I mean, come on, what are the chances? She's on the phone, ending her engagement, I show up. That's a very clear sign. Now, let me ask the ladies. Let me pick one right there. I know. You look so sad when I pointed at you. Why don't you come up then? I'm kidding. Don't do that. She's like, hey. Now, be honest. Let's just pretend you're in college. I'm one of your really good friends. I'm like a brother. You are going through, would you say trying to end an engagement would be probably the toughest thing you're gonna go through in college? Fair, barely. So you're going, you're, in the, you're like in the very like, midst of that suffering. 
and I start telling you that I've always been in love with you, how would that go across? How would that? Yeah, if you can only see her face, she's like, yeah. <laughs> Ladies, is that fair? Right? I mean, frankly, how self-centered would that be? Let's be honest. She's really hurting, and then I want to make it about who? Ah, kind of like someone else I know in this room. <laughs> I'll give you a free intensive. <laughs> Just for him, though. <laughs> and so, you already paid, right? Okay, just making sure. And so, obviously, that was not God's plan, because that would not be cool. That would not be honoring to her. And as the Lord's telling me, don't you dare say anything to her. I'm like, but Lord, I got to say something. This is why you brought me here. He's like, Michael, I did not. Don't you dare. But Lord, one, <laughs> two, Michael, don't make me get to three. No, God would do it right. He would just say three. And I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I'd be punished in inconceivable ways if I disobeyed that. And so I'm like, so they, I'm literally hugging her, having this conversation with the Lord. I go, what am I allowed to say then? He's like, just ask, what can you do to help? You know, that one question almost single-handedly defines our entire program, our entire ministry today. Because do you know how many times you get in trouble with your spouse when you genuinely want to help them, right? How many of you have ever experienced that? You're trying to help and then that blows up in your face and you really end up just offending them. How many of y'all have done that? Huh. Heart was good. Strategy is really stupid. <laughs> but what God was starting to sort of burn into my heart was that if this relationship or any relationship of yours is ever going to work, it's going to be based on servanthood. It's going to be based like on Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. You know, 5.22 is everyone's favorite verse. Ephesians 5.22 says, And wives, submit.